can looking the other way. I have to do them like that because I'm no good at noses. Mrs. Levi, the train for Yonkers leaves in five minutes, and if we don't get there on time... But we will, Mr. Kemper, and not only will Horace Vandergelder give you permission to marry his niece, Ermengarde, but he will also dance at your wedding, and not alone either, because I happen to be engaged in finding him a suitable second wife himself. What he really wants is someone steady to clean the house. As my late husband, Mr. Levi, used to say, marriage is a bribe to make a housekeeper think she's a householder. I know all about it, Mrs. Levi. Half of New York says he's going to propose to Mrs. Irene Malloy this very afternoon. Which is exactly why I'm on my way to Yonkers this morning, Mr. Kemper, and can take on your case and knock out four lovebirds with one stone, or whatever I'll throw, we'll see. And well, 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 what do you think of that? I have nothing here to pay my train fare with, only large bills, fives and sevens. I have some change here somewhere. I only hope this isn't a wild goose chase, Mrs. Levi. And speaking of poultry, I am also available for fresh Jersey eggs, surgical corsets reboned, ears pierced, pierced ears replied. Mrs. Levi! Just ain't the kind of man you see.
I'm going to marry Horace Vandergelder for his money <laughs> and send it circulating among the people like rainwater the way you talk. And I want a sign from you sometime today that you approve. Oh, it won't be a marriage in the sense that we had one, but I shall certainly make him happy. And I'm tired of, from, tired of living from hand to mouth. And so I want that sign. Mrs. Levi! Sometime today. Now don't you worry, Mr. Kerr. We'll make that train we'll get to Yonkers. You'll marry Ermengarde. Just leave everything to me. For when my little pinky wiggles, some young maiden gets the giggles. Then I make my knuckles active. My kid says she's so attractive. Then I put my index digit and they both begin to fidget. Then I clutch my paw, the creature reads a song when I put my head in there. Play Yonkers my Yonkers with all that bellowing in my ears. I can't help it, Uncle. I love your French Jasper. And I say you're too young to be in love with anybody. Here, take this. I am not too young. I'm 17, and in another year, I'll be an old maid. For the life of it, get to be an old maid in my garden, I'll cut you off without a cent. <laughs> and don't cry in front of the store. But my thunder will go in week for a while in New York where it won't be noticed. Now go upstairs and start packing this one. And don't get any tears on the lock. It was just oiled. Cornelius, Barnaby. You stumped, Mr. Vandergelder. I did. I got news for you. I'm going to New York this afternoon to march in the 14th Street Association Parade. And when I come back, you're going to have a mistress. But I'm too young, Mr. Van de Gilder. Not yours! Hella damnation! Mine! I mean, I'm getting married again. And in honor of that occasion, I've decided to promote you, Cornelius, to Chief Clark. And what am I now, Mr. Van Gelder? You're an impertinent fool, that's what you are. And I'm promoting you from impertinent fool to Chief Clerk. Any more questions? Uh, yes. What? Does, um, does the chief clerk get one evening off a week? So that's the way you thank me for a promotion, is it? No, sir. You'll attend to the store as usual. Now get back to work. Then don't forget to put the lid on the sheep dip. Evenings off. Marrying artists. Foolishness. 99% of the people in this world are fools. And the rest of us are in great danger of contamination. <laughs> Why, even I was once young, which was foolish, and got married, which was foolish, and was poor, which was more foolish than anything else. And then my wife died, which was foolish of her. <laughs> I grew older, which was sensible of me, and became rich, friendless, and mean, which in Yonkers is about as far as you can get. <laughs> oh, I know what you're wondering now. Why a man of so much good sense should be planning anything as foolish as getting married again? The answer's simple. This house without a woman would be an empty shell. Pretty dirty, too. It takes a woman, a powdered in pink, to joyously clean out the drain in the sink. And it takes an angel with four golden lashes and soft dressed fingers for dumping the ashes. Yes, it takes a woman, a daisy woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. And 
it takes a female for setting the table and meaning the Guernsey and cleaning the stable. Yes, yes it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. Ooh. Waist, 102. Ooh. Waist, 
47. Ooh, waste 47. That's with the money belt. Ooh. <laughs> now, I could arrange for you to meet this Ernestina this very afternoon. I have got time to sleep by it. I've got to take my niece Ermengarde up to New York this afternoon until she forgets a certain Ambrose Kemper. I could do that for you, Mr. Vandergelder. I know just how to handle such things. Then I'm marching in the 14th Street Parade. What an amazing coincidence! Guess who's been chosen to ride on the main float? The spirit of 14th Street, Miss Money. Her mother was a cash, you know. All right, Miss Levi. I'll meet Miss Money at the parade. But I still intend paying another call on Miss Malloy first. Oh, what races you make me run. Very well, Mr. Vandergelder. I will meet you on the bench outside of Mrs. Malloy's hat shop at 2.30 as usual. One more thing, Miss Levi. Suppose I decide against Miss Malloy and I don't like Miss Money either. Well then, Mr. Vandergelder, I happen to have one more name on my list, a name I know as well as my own. <laughs> but we won't go into that now. It'll come up all by itself, all in good time. Don't you worry about it. Oh, but wait till you see you, Ernestina Morris, a vision, a dream. It takes a woman, a powder in pink, to joyously clean out the drain in the sink. And it takes an angel with more golden lashes and soft dressing fingers for dumping the ashes. Paper. Yes, in blue. Oh my god, Ambrose, we've got plans to make. I'm good. In 10 years, I'll be promoted to chief clerk again. 33 years old, and I still don't get an evening free. When am I going to begin to live? You can live on holidays, Cornelius. Did you forget what we did last Christmas? All those canned tomatoes went bad and exploded, and you and I had to clean up the mess all afternoon. Do you call that living? No! such a smell, customers won't be able to come into here for 24 hours. That'll get us an evening off. We're going to New York, Barnaby, and we're going to live. We're going to have a good meal. We're going to be in danger. We're going to spend our money. We're going to be arrested. Ha <laughs> ha! Holy cabooses! And one last thing. We are not coming back to Yonkers until we've each kissed a girl. Cornelius, you can't do that. You don't know any girls. <laughs> I'm 33 years old. I I've got to be in some time. I'm only 17, Cornelius. That isn't so urgent for me. Look, <laughs> Barnaby. Elevated trains, the lights of Broadway. The stuffed whale at Barnum's museum. A stuffed whale. A stuffed whale. What do you say, Barnaby? <laughs> yes, Cornelius. Yes. Now, the first thing to do is to make you financially independent. I know, I'll find you a job. Can you dance? I'm an artist, Mrs. Levi. I paint. Well then, my call. Mrs. Dolly Levi. Painters taught how to dance. <laughs> now, there's a man 
Rudolph Reisenberger at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant on 14th Street. I'll give you a note for him, and we'll see if he can't have you both entered in the polka contest tonight. The prize is a week's engagement and a gold cup. Oh, the cups we won, Ephraim and me. Now hold on, Mrs. Levi. No fiancé of mine is going to step from a cafe. <laughs> and I don't mind saying I'm a surprise you Acquaintances in a place like that. Not acquaintances, Mr. Kemper. Friends. Dear friends from days gone by. My late husband, Ephraim Levi, believed in life and in any place you could find it. Cafes, ballrooms, yes, even theaters. Why, even when times were bad, every Saturday night like clockwork, down those stairs at the Harmonia Gardens we came, Ephraim and me. It's all very well to come down like clockwork, Mrs. Levi, but you're asking Ermengarde to work there. It's the only way to show Horace Vandergelder we mean business. Now, you go, to you go to Harmonia Gardens this afternoon and say Mrs. Levi sent you. And incidentally, tell Rudolph that Dolly's coming back, and I want a table for two and a chicken for eight o'clock tonight. Go ahead. Come on. The bottom roll looks all right for this. Now hold the candle under the ones on top. Now two clothes are swelled up like they're ready to burst. Holy cabooses, Cornelius, I can smell it up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get dressed, Barnaby. We're going to New York.
knew why the marriage Mrs. Levi is arranging between Mr. Horace Vandergelder, the well-known Yonkers half a millionaire, and my employer and friend, Mrs. Irene Malloy. Although, if you ask me, he'll never take the place of her late husband, Mr. Peter Malloy. May rest in peace wherever he is, I'm not sure. It was a caution, you know. Oh, it's all too much, but with late husbands and new marriages, and on top of everything else, Miss Mortimer returning this hat for the third time. Same old story, she wants more cherries and feathers. Cherries and feathers to catch a bow, I suppose. Although, if you ask me, she'd be better off with a nice, heavy veil. I told her, ribbons down our back is what we'll be wearing this summer if we want to catch a gentleman's eye, but she'd have none of it. She wants more cherries and feathers. Cherries and feathers on today of all days when that poor, dear, sweet Mrs. Malloy has enough on her mind. What with? With what, Minnie? With the door. It's stuck. It's stuck. Then push. Summer making 
Mrs. Malloy, wild horses can't make me ask the next question I'm about to ask, but I'm gonna ask it anyhow. Do you love Horace Vandergelder? No, Minnie, I don't. Peter Malloy, God rest him, was my share of love, and I'm not saying I was shortchanged. Once is enough for a woman, as long as it's true love, and it was that. Minnie, look, there's two men staring at the shop. Men? Why, I do believe they need to come in here. Men? In the shop? Oh, Mrs. Malloy, what shall we do? Do? Oh, I flirt with them, of course. I'll give you the short one. Mrs. Malloy, and you with all that talk about love. Well, I've enough I've had, Minnie. It's a bit of adventure I could do with now. We'll get them all hit it up and then drop them cold. <laughs> It'll be good practice for married life. Now you go into the workroom, Minnie. I know some ways we can perk up our appearances. Besides, a bit of a weight will only make them nervous and easier for us to... If you say vampire, I'll scream. Vampire. <laughs> and so I'll try to make it easier to find me in the stillness of July because a breeze might stir. Oh, really? You see, I have a friend. 
friend that lives in Yonkers. Do you? Perhaps you know him. Perhaps we do. Oh, it's always silly to ask in cases like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Vandergelder. <laughs> A lovely man, Mrs. Malloy, just lovely. Has only one fault, as far as I know. He's hard as nails. Cornelius, I think, I think. Now, I wonder if your friend might like this one. Look out! I'm not having your pardon, Mrs. Malloy. Gentlemen, what are you doing? No, 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 we'll explain later. Come out of there this instant! You're as innocent as can be, Mrs. Malloy. Well, really, Mr. Hagel and Mr. Tucker, I insist you both come out of there. I don't suppose Miss Levi is here, is she? She was supposed to meet me on that bench ten minutes ago. Well, she could just go looking for me if she comes. When I make an appointment, I like people to be on time. Here, here's a present for you. Chocolate-covered peanuts. Unshelled. <laughs> That's the expensive kind. <laughs> Did I just see you talking with two men? <laughs> Men, Mr. Vanderbilt. What would two men be doing in a lady's hat shop? Well, now, let's go back into my workroom. I'm so anxious for you to see it. I saw it last week. So you did. Well, Mr. Vanderbilt, what's new in the hand feed business? I understand you have three friends, all hard as nails. I mean, what on earth are you talking about? Yonkers. I hear it's a beautiful city. And who's been telling you about Yonkers, may I ask? Nobody. A friend. What friend? Well, you see, he. He? A customer, Mr. Vandergelder. Someone quite well to do, as a matter of fact. He was in here earlier buying hats for ladies. You might even know him, although it's usually silly to ask in cases like that. <laughs> it's a Mr. Cornelius Hackle. Oh! He happens to be my head clerk, that's all. Miss Malloy, I demand an explanation. And I am going to give it to you. Why shouldn't she know Cornelius Hackle? Everybody in New York knows Cornelius Hackle. Why, he's at the opera. He's in all the fashionable homes. Why, he's at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant three times a week. Impossible. He's only got $146.35. And I keep it in my own safe. Oh, Mr. Vandergelder, you're killing me. He is one of the hackles. They built the canal. What canal? The, the Panama. Panama. <laughs> the the Panama. <laughs> Both. It ain't the same man. Who took the horses out of Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the streets? Cornelius Hackle. And who dressed up as a waiter at the Fifth Avenue Hotel and dropped an oyster down Mrs. Astor's? Oh, well, I can't say it, but it was Cornelius. He is the playboy of New York. Now, Irene, don't deny it. I can see you were taken with him just like everybody else. Dolly! What are you saying? I've only seen him once in my life. Really, Dolly, I... Excuse me. Of course. Exactly what the court will 
want to know when you're accused of entering that closet without a search warrant. Patty, what do you stand for if you don't stand for the laws of this great land? I know what I stand for. I stand for motherhood, America, and a hot lunch for orphans. Take off your hat, sir. Fancy Ross's flag is passing. Do you see him on the Yeti fur? He's that great triumphal arch. If you see him as he's trembling through the gates of wrath, stand up and march, march, march. Is this not a fact you do, sir? And I must echo here what was said by that great and patriotic American, uh, uh, Moses. <laughs> Now, now, uh, I hear there's this 
very nice restaurant in the railroad station. Oh, no, Mr. Hackle. If the Harmonia Gardens is good enough for your fashionable friends, it's good enough for us. They say they have a lovely orchestra uh, there, uh, Betty. Yeah, we couldn't go there. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. It isn't the money or anything like that. No, 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 it's the way. <laughs> no, it isn't the way of Barnaby. It's the. It, it's the dancing. You see, they have dancing in a place like that, exhibitions, even contests, and I don't know how it would take me in weeks, months, years to learn that. And and uh, ha ha. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Dolly Levi. Thirty-three-year-old chief clerks taught how to dance. <laughs> now it's very simple. You put one arm here and one arm here. Oh, it's no use. I have absolutely no sense of rhythm. Absolutely no sense of rhythm is one of the primary requirements for learning through the Gallagher Levi method. Just give me five minutes of your time, Mr. Hackle, and I'll have you dancing in the streets. Now we'll start with lesson seven. The waltz kick turn. It's simple. Right foot touch, left foot touch, under, back, around, touch, back, through, around, behind, out, over, release, unfurl. <coughs> unfurl. Please unfurl, <coughs> in the of the Lord. <coughs> That's wonderful. But I think of all the lucky women who will find heaven in your arms. Let's go back to lesson one. Put your hand on her waist and stand with her right in your left hand.
I've taken out the cat, I've locked the door, I've made myself a little rum toddy, and before I went to bed, I said a prayer, thanking God that I was independent, and that no one else's life was mixed up with mine. Then one night, an oak leaf fell out of my Bible. I placed it there when you asked me to marry you, Ephraim. A perfectly good oak leaf, but without color and without life. And I suddenly realized that I was like that leaf. For years I had not shed one tear, nor had I been filled with the wonderful hope that something or other might turn out well. And so, I decided to rejoin the human race. And Ephraim, I want you to give me away. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna get it stepped while there's still time left. Before the parade passes by,
mind. She's beautiful. Everything you said and more. Don't do it, Miss Bunny. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Hey, you, cut that out. Stop. See, take my gun. Oh, put that back, you. I paid for that girl and I bought all the parts. Miss Money, what have they done to you? <laughs> Miss Levi, what is the meaning of this? Nothing to get upset about, Horace. A last minute substitution. Uh, Miss Money had a sudden urgent business appointment at the Mint. They ran a little short and she's helping out. But she will meet you at 8 o'clock tonight at the Harmonium Gardens restaurant. That's the most expensive restaurant in the city. And well, it should be. What food and the fastest waiters in New York. By the way, I might be a little bit late, so I, Miss Money will meet you in front of the restaurant. Oh, but wait till you see your Horace, all in buttercup yellow with baby pink shoes, humming an old-fashioned tune. Yes, sweet, those are pretty. You couldn't miss her if you tried. I'll be there, Dolly, but only because I already paid for the introduction, and I might as well get my money's worth. But from this point on, you are hereby discharged as my marriage broker. Do you hear me? From now on, Dolly Gallagher, you're just a woman like anyone else. Where are you taking me? What's happening? <laughs>
misunderstand me. It isn't the money or anything like that, no. It's, um, it's just that nowadays, um, really elegant people never take hacks. Hacks is up. They all go by streetcar. TV Vanderbilt's damage and mortgage. And by all means, a streetcar. Just think, I've been elegant all my life and I never even knew it. Of course, if you really want to be elegant, we do. You, you walk. Let's do New York.
and it is my order as head waiter of the Harmonia Gardens and your supreme commander that tonight of all nights our usual lightning fast service will be twice as lightning as ever or else. Thank you. 
no, no wine. No, no wine? Yeah. Yeah. Champagne. 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 Oh, it's once in a lifetime bar to be up to. Champagne and uh, uh, Neapolitan ice cream and, uh, and hot house peaches and uh, Barnaby give the band leader a nickel and tell him to play to a wild rose. We want beers and when we die. <laughs>
Dolly! Solly Gallagher! What are you doing in that ghetto? Then you're a half hour late. I demand an explanation of... Ernestina! Exactly! Ernestina, whom I trusted! She wanted to do the hoochie coochie. <laughs> well, she always was artistic. <laughs> Horace, I'm going to have our table moved down front. There's someone in the dance competition I particularly want you to see. <laughs> Not today, not after what's happened. Good. Then cancel the chicken. And bring a turkey. <laughs> what are you doing now? Oh, nothing. Just looking the place over. Getting acquainted with the surroundings. That's the trouble with you, Dolly. Always wanting to know everything. Always putting your nose into other people's affairs. Anybody who married you would get as nervous as a cat. I said anybody who married you would- Horace Vandergelder, get that idea right out of your head this minute! I'm surprised you even mentioned such a thing. Understand once and for all that I have no intention of marrying you. I didn't mean that! Well, I certainly do hope not. Horace Vandergelder, you go your way, and I'll go mine. <laughs> I'm not some Irene Malloy whose head can be turned by a few chocolate-covered peanuts. Unshelled. Why the idea of you even suggesting such a thing? Miss Levi, you misunderstood me. Well, I certainly do hope not. But if I had any intention of marrying again, it would be to a far more pleasure-loving man than you. However, we won't discuss it anymore. Here comes the waiter with our food. I'll serve Mr. Vandergelder Rudolph. Here's some white meat for you. And some dumplings, lighter than air they are. And some giblets, very tender and very good for you. No, as I said before, you go your way and I'll go mine. <laughs> Start writing on the wine, I think you'll feel better at once. However, since you did bring the matter up, there's just one more thing I ought to say. I didn't bring the matter up at all. One more thing I ought to say before we forget all about it. Yes, it's true, I'm a woman who likes to know everything that's going on, who likes to manage things. But I would not like to manage anything as out of control as your household. You'll have to do that yourself, God helping you. It's not out of control. Very well. Let's not say another word about it. Have some beets, Horace. They're good. I don't like beets. That's good. No, just a plain, quarrelsome, friendless soul like you is no sort of companion for me. You salt your beets, and I'll salt mine. Would you stop saying that? I won't say another word. Good. Except this. At your age, Horace, you should enjoy hearing the honest truth. My age? My age? You're always talking about my age. Well, I don't know what your age is, but I do know that up in Yonkers with bad food and a bad temper, you'll double it in six months. <sighs> Have some more beets. They're good. I don't like beets. I hate beets. That's nice. <laughs> It is. You could be a perfectly charming, witty, amiable man if you wanted to. I don't want to be charming. Oh, but you are. Look at you now. You can't hide it. Now sit down, Horace, and let's talk of something else. <laughs> sit. <laughs> Since the thing is, though, because I really need to say this, and I understand that you really should have more beats. So will you stop giving me beats? <laughs> yes. And who ordered beats? Me. I wanted the beats. You wanted the beats? I wanted the beats. <laughs> yes, understand that you could be a perfectly charming man if you wanted to. We have the I don't want to be charming. You will know this. Oh, oh, how's it with this wine? But. Why does it taste like beets? <laughs> Before we change the subject, there is just one more thing I'm going to say. I don't want to hear it. And you're wasting your time, Dolly Levi. I won't ask you to marry me. 
Well, I suppose that means you want me to ask you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Horace, I'm turning you down. How can you turn me down when I haven't asked you anything? <laughs> I've got a headache. I'm going back to my hotel. Oh, you can't go now. The competition's about to begin. Here's the money to pay for the dinner. Here's $20 and... Wait a minute. Huh. There's nothing in here but a dollar, three dimes, five pennies, and a... and a button! This isn't my purse. I've lost my purse. Barnaby, oh. that purse you found! Impossible. I can't imagine you without your purse. It's Vandergilders! Cornelius, we have to get out of here! What am I going to do? I've never been here before. They don't know me. Stop eating that turkey. I can't pay for it. Oh, look, Horace. It's the latest thing. A polka. Oh, and there's one dancer I particularly want you to see. Miss Rudolph, move our table right down front so Mr. Vandergelder can better observe his graceful movements. serious violations of the law of this city. Is there anyone here to speak in your behalf? I say, is there anyone here to speak in your behalf?
Miss Dollar Levi, counselor at law. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense rests. Hold the right hand Gentlemen, when I see upon that bench a brow that gleams with honor, a pair of snow white whiskers that bristle with fair play, and a nose, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to look at that nose, a nose that shines in the night like a flaming beacon of justice. Would you mind turning this way a bit, Your Honor, so we could get a better look at your beacon? A living symbol of the motto of this great land, E Proboscis Uno. <laughs> Your Honor, I ask for the freedom of my clients and for a verdict of guilty for the one true culprit, Mr. Horace Vandergather of Yonkers, New York. Dolly! The one man responsible for these grievous charges of willful destruction of private property. A curtain torn, a vator, bruised! <laughs> And a solid gold cup. <laughs> Cruelty to a poor, unfortunate minor. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that, dude? I'm uh, begging your pardon, Mrs. Levi, but um, if it pleases the court, I have something to say. I was just about to call you, Mr. Hackle. Go right ahead. Uh, Cornelius Hackle, if you dare testify against me, you'll be discharged. You've already done that, Mr. Vandergelder. I'll do it again. You've done it again, too. But even if you hadn't, I'd, already, I'd say what I'd have to say. Uh, um, I don't know much about disturbing the peace or inciting a riot, but what I do know, excuse me, pardon me, sorry, sorry, is that what happened to me today, which is the most important thing that can happen to a man, but pardon, uh, so sorry, coming through, uh, might never have happened if I had obeyed your orders and stayed in Yonkers, New York. Your Honor, I am talking about none other than love. What? You're trying to tell me that after 33 years, you've fallen in love because you take one evening off? Oh, no, Mr. Vandergelder. I didn't fall in love with Mrs. Irene Malloy of this city in just an evening. Um, yes. An hour! And even that's too long. What's less than a minute? A second. Less than that. Uh, I thought it was still on. Uh, a moment? That's it! I'll go slowly so you can get it all down. It I have to dig 
ditches for the rest of my life. I'll be a ditch digger who once had a wonderful day. Winter nights, 
Taurus. You can snuggle up to your cash register. It's a little lumpy, but it rings. Don't come on. Out of the world, too. It's all in how you use it. My late husband, Ephraim Levi, used to say, Money, pardon the expression, is like manure. It's not worth a thing unless it's spread around encouraging young things to grow. Anyhow, that's the opinion of the second, Mrs. Van der Gelder. Which reminds me, Ephraim, I'm ready for that sign. Well, don't just stand there. That goes upstairs. Well, Horace, as I was saying, I found you the ideal wife. 
Dalit Gallagher, I don't want you to find me the ideal wives. If I want an ideal wife, I'll find one on my own. And I found her. And it's you, damn it! My horse! I know I was a fool about Miss Walloy and that other woman, but forgive me, Dolly. And marry me. Horace, stop right there. What do you mean? Oh, Horace, you know as well as I do, you're the first citizen of Yonkers, and it would mean your wife would have to be a somebody. Answer me. Am I a somebody? You are. Wonderful woman. Oh, you're partial. No, Horace, it won't be enough to shower your wife with money and jewels, to insist she'd be benefactress to half the town. By the way, it's bad business letting Cornelius open a store across the, across the street from you. Better take him back and let him be your partner. Partner? And Barnaby can have Cornelius' his old job. Now see here, Dolly. That way we'll all be together so we can dance at Ermengarde's wedding. That doesn't. You've gone too far, Dolly. I'll dance at no weddings. Besides, I don't know how, and it would take me weeks, months, years to <laughs> All right, I'll dance. Why, Horace, I never thought I'd hear you say a thing like that. That front room, idiot! Well, go on. What are you waiting for? Horace Vandergelder, what is going on up there? Oh, nothing. I just thought I'd have that front room done over a blue wallpaper. Horace. I know the old paper ain't worn yet, yes, but that fellow's just set up a business and it needs a good start. You see, Dolly, I've always felt that money, part of my expression, is like manure. It's not worth a thing unless... Thank you, Ephraim. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you 